Okay, let's look at four subsets, the first three competencies. We've talked about null space, we've talked about row space, we've talked about column space. One more space that we're going to talk about is left null space, which is the null space of A transpose. It can also be described as the set of vectors Y, here I should say row vectors, uh, such that Y A equals zero. Because you, if you want to multiply a matrix on the left by a vector, it better be a row vector. So this should say the set of row vectors. All right, now, uh, they talk about extended echelon form, which is you take the matrix and then the identity next to it and row reduce. And the chapter talks about how this resulting matrix divides naturally into four matrices. C is the one at the top left. L is the one at the bottom right. The one on the bottom left is all zeros. And the other one, the one at the top right, I think is called K. Or J, I think it's called J. So, given the submatrices C and L of the extended echelon matrix, find linearly independent sets of vectors that span the following sets. Null space of A, range of A, column space of A, and null space of A transpose. Some of these we've seen before. Now let's see how that works in an example. All right, so suppose that A is a 4 by 4 matrix such that the 4 by 8 matrix AI is row equivalent to this. All right, in other words, this is the, well, all right, so the question is, is this in extended echelon form? And this one's okay, but this one is not okay, and this one is not okay. So we have to do a little bit of additional uh, reduction to find the extended echelon form, but not too much, because most of the columns are okay. We just have to fix up this column and this column. All right. So that part A is find the extended echelon form of A. Let's go ahead and grab it, and I'll move it down, and we'll do that. Hopefully this will work. Grab the extended echelon form carefully. Copy it and move it down to the bottom. Okay. Okay, let's see if that works. Very good. Okay, so we want to find the extended echelon form of this. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we should do is take care of all of these in the last column. That's easy to do. I can take minus 2R4 plus R1. That'll take care of this one. And I take minus 4R4 plus R2. That'll take care of this one. And I get minus R3 plus minus R4 plus R3. That'll take care of this one. So what I have left is just 1, 5, 9. 0, 1, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 9, 2, 2, 4, and then 0, 0, 0, let's see, 6 zeros, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and then this one is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, very good. All right, so now all you have to do is take care of this 2 up here. And taking care of the 2 is just going to take be minus 2R3 plus R2. So minus 2R3 plus R2. And that's easy enough. That's just going to zero out that 1. So we get 1, 5, 9, 0, 1, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 9, 2, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Oh, sorry, this was a 0, sorry. And, and that's the only thing that changes because uh, we've already zeroed out everything else. Whoops, this should be a 0. I'm sorry, that should be a 0. Forgot about that. 0, we took care of that already. Okay, so then we have, uh, this is going to be, lost my train of thought here. This just becomes a 1. 0, 0, and then this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Let's pretty this up so that we can uh, destroy the evidence. Uh, that's it. Whoops. Sorry. Destroy too much evidence. Um, just want to destroy that evidence and this evidence. Whoops. Again, destroy too much evidence. OK. 
Okay, let's, well, anyway, uh, looks like I'm getting messed up here. Okay, so let's put those back how they're supposed to be. This one was a zero. Uh, this was a zero. This was a zero. Let's see. Up here was a, looks like this one should be a, uh, that came from here. So this one is a zero. This one is a zero. And this one is a zero. So this is the REF form. And that's part A. So let's see what the second thing that was asked. Second thing that was asked was identify the matrices C and L. Okay, so let's divide this up. Now what you want to do is remember what size the original matrix was. Original matrix was uh, four by four. Of course, the, the size of the identity is going to be the same number of rows. So this had four rows. So the identity was the last four here. And then we have these zeros here. Okay, so let me do it in a different color so we can identify what's going on here. So I'll do it in green. So let's divide it up here. This goes like this. So don't just go as far as you can with the zeros. The, the, when you divide it up, the two halves have to be the same size as the original two halves. All right, so uh, this, this matrix is C up here, and this matrix is L down here. All right. So that's identifying the matrices C and L. Okay, so we've taken care of that's part B. So let's just write it out just to be complete. So my C... C is equal to 1, 5, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And L is equal to 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. All right, so now let's get to the last part. The last part was find uh, null, find in this case, I just asked for null space of A, row space of A, and null space of A transpose. All right, so you just have to remember uh, the, the way the rule goes. So for part C, uh, for part C, the null space of, the null space of A, null space of A is equal to, is actually equal to the null space of C. So you can figure that out in the usual way, the way we usually find null spaces of row reduced matrices. You can see that C is actually in REF form. So you just set equal to zero, you have two free variables and so on. So we've done that before. All right, now the second one, row space of A, is equal to the row space of C. So in this case, it's going to be just those two rows because C has linearly independent rows. So it's equal to the span of the uh, rows of C. Okay. And of course you would take the transpose. One five nine zero 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 one. Okay. Finally we have the left null space. So I think what did he call that? L L I forget what he called it. No well it's null space of a transpose. And here you just have to remember that the null space of a, of a transpose is simply equal to the row space of L. Now there's a reason for that, um, and it's a very beautiful reason, and you can think about why it might be, and there is sort of an explanation in the book, uh, but I think it's a, a little hard to cut, get across at a first exposure to linear algebra. But you can just remember that the null space of A transpose is the row space of L, which is the rows of L turned into columns, so in this case it would be the span of 0, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Th again, I can say the span of the rows of L transpose. Okay, so you can see how to break that apart. Just to remember that when you break apart, you have to identify that lower. Basically, the key is identify the block of zeros. Uh, number of rows of the block of zeros is equal to the 
I'm sorry, number of columns in the block of zeros is equal to the number of columns in the original matrix A. In this case, A was a square matrix, but you're not necessarily going to have a square matrix. Sometimes there may be more columns than rows, uh, uh, in which case the identity matrix will always be square, but the part in front may not be square. So, but, uh, but apart from that, everything works exactly the same way. You still pull out the matrix C and L and get the row spaces and null spaces accordingly. 